Hi, I'm Tam with the SCO with your solar storm forecast for the week of August 18th. The sun this week has been pretty quiet, at least as it goes for flares. There's not been a lot of flare activity on the disk, but when you look at this filament right here, you can see it kind of has a fit and start, and then finally it lifts off the disk around uh, midday on the 15th, and that is a solar storm that is earthward directed and it is coming for us, but more on that in a minute. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we've actually been very, very low over the past week with activity only beginning to rise again over the last few days with the return of some regions on the east limb. However, looking at storms at Earth, we did get some elevated activity from the 9th until the 12th when some high-speed wind from a coronal hole pushed through, but we didn't get any aurora shots on the ground. However, the ISS had some gorgeous shots of some aurora during this period uh, out in space. Returning to that filament eruption from the 15th, you can see in coronagraphs, both in the Earth view and in the backside monitor, that has this absolutely gorgeous halo eruption, so that does mean it is Earth-directed and it is coming toward us. Switching to our prediction model, Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model. You can see that solar storm coming out and hitting Earth. It, the impact is expected to be somewhere around noonish on the 18th, maybe a little bit later, uh, but it's going to be a direct hit. Now, if we take that impact footprint and we flip it so that North is facing up, you can see Earth really is in the densest part of this structure. However, NOAA's impact is, uh, is slated to be a bit less than what NASA has predicted, so there is some uncertainty as whether this is going to be a strong storm or not. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo B looking at the sun from behind. And you can see there's already been several eruptions just recently in the past few days, especially from regions 2146 and 47, which are now just rotating onto the Earth's east limb. So expect to see more from these regions in the coming week. Switching to science grade maps that show all of the active regions all over the sun, I'm going to focus in on this region here because these are the regions that are just entering into Earth's view. Now you've got region 2121 and 2126, those have been renumbered 46 and 47, and you can see there's a lot of growth and a lot of synergy between these regions. And you can also see there's a lot of peppering of new active regions growing in and fading and that kind of thing. So these will be a source of possibly more uh, high-level flares and definitely sources of solar storms in the coming week. Returning to the disk, you can see we've actually had quite a few active regions transiting Earth view this week, but they've all been pretty stable. The ones we've been watching are region 2144, which kind of pops out of nowhere as it's transiting Earth disk, and 2139, which is also unstable. But the real players, I think, this week are just now beginning to come onto Earth disk from the east limb, and that's going to be region 2141 as well as 46 and 47. Those, I think, will get NOAA to up the M flare threat level this week. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora outlook over the next week, we do have that incoming solar storm coming in about the 18th. So NOAA has given us about a 30% chance for a major storm at high latitudes starting around the 19th and possibly moving into the 20th. Uh, at mid latitudes, it's only about a 15% for a minor storm, but again, it could continue into the 20th and then it should settle down shortly after that. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook for the next week, NOAA has upped the Mth class threat level to about 20% uh, because of some of the regions that have just been rotating onto the Earth's disk, and that could conceivably increase over the course of this week as we get a better look at regions 46 and 2147. Regarding particle radiation storms, the threat is still pretty low because we haven't seen any M-class flares as of yet, but again, depending upon what 46 and 47 give us, this could change. So this looks to be the beginning of a very exciting week. We do have those regions 21, 46, and 47 that as they rotate in will give us a better idea if it's going to start increasing our flare activity. But meanwhile, we have that solar storm that's incoming. It should be hitting us any moment now. And we're already beginning to see some disturbed solar wind ahead of that storm. So you might expect to see uh, some issues with your GPS or traffic services or any satellite-based services like satellite phone and internet and also ham radio operators, you expect to have con uh, unsettled conditions and disturbances uh, for the next 24 to 48 hours until that storm blows through. But outside of that, it gives us some really great aurora possibilities. So here's hoping that we'll have some really great aurora pictures soon. I'm Tam with the Scove. Thank you for watching.